Hey guys, welcome back to Cooking with Tammy Live. I'm Tammy and today guys, we are gonna be making a quick and easy but yet super delicious childhood favorite. Today we are gonna be making meatloaf, guys. Our meatloaf is gonna be so tasty. It's gonna be absolutely nice and moist. Oh my goodness. And it's gonna be packed with a ton of flavor. So without further ado guys, let's introduce our ingredients and get started. First thing up on our ingredient list is our ground beef. Mm-hmm. We have a ton of seasonings, guys, as you can see, because guess what? We are about to make the best meatloaf in the world. So we have some dried parsley. We also have some Italian seasoning. Not to mention, we have the barbecue sauce, which could be substituted with ketchup. We also have some beefy onion soup mix. Not to mention, we have the beef bouillon. So what I did was I did a half-half. If you don't have um, the beefy soup mix, you can always use you can double the beef bouillon instead, or vice versa. We also have some Worcestershire sauce, not to mention we have garlic powder, onion powder, as well as salt, ground black pepper, diced, or should I say minced onions because they're chopped really finely. We also have some breadcrumbs and red bell peppers that's finely chopped as well, as well as green bell peppers, eggs, and we also have milk. Yes, guys, let's get to cooking. To this delicious ground beef right here, we are gonna add our seasonings. Now I know you see I got the gloves on because we about to get dirty, we about to get to work. I'm gonna beat my eggs, because I want it to be able to incorporate easy within the meat. First thing we're gonna add to this mix is our salt, ground black pepper, of course. Get that pepper in there. We're gonna add our garlic powder our onion powder. Can't tell me this recipe is not straightforward and easy, right? We're also gonna add our beef bouillon powder, as well as our beefy onion soup mix, our Italian seasonings, and our dried parsley. Bell peppers, of course, we got the reds right here. And we chopped it really fine because we don't want it to be chunky inside of our meatloaf. And we also have some green bell peppers that's finely minced up as well. And we have our onions right here. We're gonna add it to the mix. Make sure I get everything. Worcestershire sauce right up in there. That's gonna give it some flavor. <laughs> And we have our barbecue sauce as well, because our meatloaf is gonna be saucy. Mm hmm just like that. And we have our eggs, which we're gonna add to the mix. It's gonna be so much easier to incorporate because we beat those eggs, as well as our breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. And to soften it all up, we have our milk, guys. And yes, using our hands, we are gonna get in there and we are gonna combine all of these ingredients, guys. Oh my goodness. Did I forget to tell you that this meatloaf is gonna be so mouth-watering? It's gonna be the best meatloaf ever. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get in there, we're gonna combine everything together, just like this. All you gotta do, guys, get yourself some ground meat. You can mix it, you can do beef, pork, chicken, whatever it is that you wanna do. Ground turkey, this recipe is so universal. However, I would say if you do ground turkey or chicken, instead of using the beef bouillon powder, you can always use the chicken bouillon powder. It goes really, really well. Mm. We're gonna get in there and make sure every piece of meat it is perfectly seasoned. However, the trick to making a moist meatloaf is within the milk that you add. The milk and the breadcrumbs as well as the eggs. Those three right there, partnered up, makes the best meatloaf. Nice and moist. All right, I would say that's enough mixing because we don't want our meatloaf to be, you know, tough. We want it to be nice and juicy. All right, guys, that's it. We are gonna take this perfectly seasoned meatloaf and we are gonna put it into our loaf pan. That's why it's called meatloaf. <laughs> Cause you're gonna loaf it out into the pan. <laughs> we 
We're gonna put it in the pan just like that. I know I'm bringing back so many childhood memories right about now, yes. Hit me in the comment section, let me know what you used to eat your meatloaf with. <laughs> And of course, I know we can all agree, grandmas make the best meatloaf. Oh. <laughs> so if you're a grandma, then you're listening. Shout out to you, grandma and grandmas. Now that our meatloaf is in the pan, absolutely perfect, right? Yes. Anyway, guys, we are going to place our meatloaf into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. No 350 today. We're not doing 350. <laughs> we're going to do 375 Fahrenheit, of course, and we're going to place it into the oven for about 40 minutes. We're going to go in there and check, and we're going to use our handy dandy thermometer because guess what? When you're dealing with like a thick piece of meat, what you want to do is you want to take that thermometer, go into the thickest part, and make sure it's it has the appropriate cooking temperature. So for the meatloaf, it's gonna be 160 degrees Fahrenheit and that's gonna be the perfect cooking temperature for this meatloaf. Anyway guys, off to the oven we go and I'll show you what everything looks like and make sure you continue watching because I'm gonna show you how to make a banging, banging guys. Sauce to go along with this meatloaf is gonna be off the hook. While our delicious meatloaf was doing its thing, look, I know you guys can see that excess oil that's sitting in the pan, right? Listen, we are not gonna consume that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drain that off because of course it's beef, just like pork, you're gonna have that excess oil. Drain it off and we're gonna make our sauce. We're gonna drain it off just like that. And don't worry, we're not losing any flavor. We are not losing any flavor. I'm just gonna go in and hold it, give it that extra security. <laughs> And that goes in the basura, that goes in the garbage. I just want you guys to see something. I wanna show you that we didn't lose any moisture, guys. Check it out, look at that juiciness. Look at those refreshing bubbles right there. What? Absolutely juicy and tender, you get that bounce back. What? Mm. Anyway, let's move on to making our sauce because if not, I'm just gonna stand here and admire this meatloaf for like an hour. So for our sauce guys, we're gonna need ketchup of course. Get that ketchup, whatever your favorite brand is. We're also gonna need some brown sugar. This is the light brown sugar. We have some garlic powder as well as some Worcestershire sauce. And we have our apple cider vinegar for that little extra tang, hey! So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our brown sugar, add it to that tomato sauce, or should I say ketchup. And we're gonna take our garlic powder, Worcestershire sauce in the mix and we have last but not least Mr. Apple Cider Vinegar. We're gonna lightly take our time and incorporate all of our ingredients. I'm just, <laughs> we're gonna literally mix all the ingredients together just like this. Mm -hmm. And once we are done, make sure you get that sugar at the bottom because you don't want that sugar to sit at the bottom. This is gonna be our delicious saucy sauce. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, I think it's fair enough to say Tammy's sauce is ready to go. And of course, if you taste it, you want to add more sugar, totally up to you. You're the one consuming this meatloaf. Make it customary. All right, now that we are done with our sauce, what we're going to do is we're going to take it, take our brush, mm -hmm, and we are going to brush. You know what? Forget the brush. <laughs> we're going to take this sauce and we're going to drizzle it onto our meatloaf just like that. We're gonna get the full cooking with Tammy effect. Now we're gonna go in with the brush just like that. Mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> and we are gonna sauce this baby up. Make sure you get the sides and the crevices. Ooh, we absolutely beautiful. And that's a little chunky piece of sugar right there, but guess what, that's okay because it's gonna melt once it goes back into the oven for about 15 minutes because we want that sauce to get thick and we want it to stick to the meatloaf, guys. Literally stick to the meatloaf. So that way it's nice and delicious and tasty. Anyway, back into the oven, 375 for about 10 minutes. Now that our meatloaf is in the oven, I've been working behind the scenes because of course, I couldn't just make meatloaf and leave it as that. Of course not. 
Meatloaf and what? We need meatloaf to go with something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make my absolutely delicious whipped mashed potatoes that's gonna pair perfectly along with some sauteed spinach and everything is gonna tie together absolutely deliciously. Mashed potato time. I'm gonna go in with this potato masher. Get these potatoes mashed up. And of course, these are just regular Idaho potatoes. Nothing out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Once they're cooked all the way through, mashing them is gonna be so easy. Nothing complicated whatsoever. And just in case you're wondering how many potatoes, make as many potatoes to feed you and your family or your guests or whomever you're gonna be feeding. We are gonna add some butter. How much butter? Add as much as you like. <laughs> just like that. And we're gonna add a little salt. And I like to add black pepper to my mashed potatoes. I sure do. It tastes so good, guys. You gotta give it a try. And I'm gonna add my heavy cream because that's just what I like to add. I love to add heavy cream. If you want to add regular milk, you can. If you want to add half and half, totally up to you. Totally optional. Mm -hmm. We are going to whip these potatoes into shape, guys. I'm going to go in there with my handheld mixer. And it's about to be on. <laughs> All right, this is perfect. Couple pulses. I want it to be nice and whipped, but I still want a little texture in there. Go in there one more time with the spatula, just like this, and this is perfect. Mm -hmm. I have a little Gruyere cheese right here. If you wanna use Parmesan cheese, you can as well. I'm gonna grate some Gruyere over these mashed potatoes. Give it a nice nutty, creamy flavor. For our spinach, what we're gonna do is to a nice warm skillet, we're gonna add a little oil, not too much. We don't want greasy spinach, just enough. And we're gonna add some butter, give it a nice creamy taste. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I am gonna go in there with my wash. Wash. Okay, make sure you wash the spinach before you cook it. Oh my God, girl, you better get a bigger pot or a bigger pan because your spinach is overflowing here, yeah, right. What's gonna happen is the spinach is gonna roll her away literally in a couple of seconds. It's like a magic act. And we are gonna have such a little bit of spinach, to be honest with you. So if you're making uh, spinach for a large amount of people, make sure you grab a couple bags of spinach because trust me, this is gonna roll her down to literally less to nothing. Go in there, mix it up, allow it to do its thing. Right now my flame is on low heat, and that's all we need. What did I tell you? Look at what we have now, literally, less than nothing. All right guys, I'm gonna season up my spinach. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with a little bit, as you can see, a little bit of chicken bouillon as well as garlic powder. This ramekin right now is being shared, shared occupancy. So I added, like I said, a little chicken bouillon as well as a little garlic powder. I'm gonna add it to the spinach, give it some flavor. Just a tad bit of salt, not much, because our chicken bouillon has uh, salt already. And we're also gonna add some black pepper. And we are gonna mix it all together, just like that. And of course, the water in the pan is the water from the spinach. That's totally okay. It's gonna help our seasonings to incorporate with the spinach even better. <laughs> And that's literally it when it comes to our spinach. Just make sure that seasoning is well incorporated. And voila, we have flavored spinach. Yes, turn off that stove top. I just took our spinach from the pan and look. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, I'm literally gonna stretch it out by adding some broccoli to the same liquid that I cooked the spinach in. Just a couple broccoli pieces just to kind of stretch it out just a bit because that's not enough to feed one person and cover it down 
Make sure that stove is on low and allow it to steam. Just before I cut into it, guys, look at how beautiful our sauce is nice and thick. Mm, our meatloaf. Look at all the juices just running out, guys. Mouth watering. Not to mention the smell, the aroma is so amazing. I can't wait to cut into it. But first, we have our spinach right here. Yes, we also have our broccoli, of course, helping our spinach along. <laughs> and we have our perfectly whipped Gruyere cheese, mashed potatoes. And of course, you can always substitute with Parmesan cheese. Couldn't find it, so I ended up using Gruyere. And yes, guys, dinner is ready to be served. So it's about that time, guys. It's time to cut into this meatloaf. Without further ado, look at that knife just gliding. Oh my God. No pressure applied. Look at that. Look at that. Tender and juicy. Look at the, just look. Look at the juices. Mm -hmm. Absolutely gorgeous, guys. Definitely like, share, and don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share these recipes with others. And definitely let them know what your girl cooking with Tammy is doing. And I will catch you guys in another video. Bye, guys.